All right, welcome back to GTTV. I'm Daniel Kaiser, and I could not be more excited to introduce you to Casey Hutchin from BioWare. We've seen Mass Effect 3 already, but we're going to see more, an extended edition of the demo. Tell us what we're seeing. Well, uh, you saw the press conference stuff, and this is some of the stuff that we're showing behind closed doors. It's you know a pretty uh, significant stretch from the actual game. We're going to see combat, cutscenes. This is how the actual game's going to play. Let's take a look. Health, however, I'm fine, Commander. Females kept secret, possibly a mole in STG, could be indoctrinated. If no Krogan alliance with Turians, Reapers left unchallenged. We'll do more than challenge them. Shepard, meet us at next checkpoint. Cerberus likely to target. Uh! So right away you'll notice that the weapons are just a lot more hard hitting and uh, Shepard's got a lot of new mobility stuff and it really works with a lot of the cutscenes that we're doing in the cinematic moments, so it's just a little point of view segment there. Um, so we're really weaving a lot of the way that the combat and the cinematics and everything works together. So it really blurs the line, it's a very cinematic experience. Right, and a big focus this time around on melee combat, correct? That's right. Yeah, so we've got um, lots of really cool stuff that you're doing in and out of cover. And we have a new weapon called the Omniblade. And the Omniblade is uh, that right there. <laughs> it's essentially a hologram blade that you can flip out like a switchblade and use it in a visceral melee attack whenever you want. Um, so as soon as you do it, you know, it's pretty addictive. You want to do it again, let these guys get up close to you. And it really changes the way that the combat feels. You can also use it in a bunch of different situations as well. Mm -hmm. Moving around the environment seems a lot quicker and, and, and more intuitive as well. Talk a little bit about that. Right, well, you'll see uh, Shepard take cover here. And so in addition to the cover stuff, we've also got like rolling between cover. Shepard is able to do combat rolls to the side, forwards, backwards. And uh, this allows you to get in and, in and out of trouble a lot easier and faster. So you can use that Omni Blade, rolling into cover, mantling things a lot faster. Um, so that really helps. And the other thing is, what you'll see here is these enemies have more complex behaviors. These particular ones here are carrying shields. And so you might have seen that in the game before. But the cool thing about Mass Effect Combat is that you have a squad of three characters. So while two of them are fighting uh, the guys up the one side, Shepard's able to move around. And now flanking actually really does something interesting. Um, the other things you can do is it makes powers more interesting because you can get your squad to actually rip that shield away with, with a biotic power like pull, or uh, you can have someone just hammer it with a concussive round that knocks them back. So now tactics just make a lot more sense when the enemies are a lot tougher. Excellent. What are we taking a look at here now? Uh, Shepard's going to move this pod up ahead. Containment shield strong, but not designed for direct fire. This isn't your problem, Commander. You don't know me. But I'd like to. Hang in there. How many more checkpoints? Just landing area. Hope Erdnot Rex still waiting. Rex can't keep his hands off a fertile female. He'll be there. I'll see you up top. Enemy! All right, we're talking a little bit about the squad mates there, and obviously we were talking about that before, but what can you tell us about the characters in the game? Well, you're going to bring back uh, a few characters you might have seen before from Mass Effect 1 and 2, and we're introducing a whole bunch of new characters as well. Right there you saw how uh, Shepard's new mobility stuff allows you to actually be stealthy, and you can combine that with the Omniblade to be stealthy and pretty lethal, just pulling guys right over cover to use your Omniblade attack. And then we're also going to show how, you know, there's another style of play. You're really choosing how you want to play, and up here we're going to show more of a run-and-gun approach. So we're basically going to, into slow motion with this adrenaline power, throwing grenades, getting in those squad powers, and you can just basically bring all of this stuff at the same time and do a run and gun style, and uh, you can see chaos ensues. Absolutely ensues. It's pretty intense, and as somebody who's been following the series, it's obviously a lot more action-oriented. But talk about the RPG elements as well. It's not just an action game. That's right. Yeah, we've really deepened the whole... Uh, RPG experience, so you're not just um, getting access to new powers now, but you also choose what version of those powers you want. So we're going to move it up ahead here, and what we're going to see is a Cerberus Atlas. It's not just an enemy, it's actually a vehicle that you'll get to control in the game. Pod then transfers to loading area. 
Let's get you out of there. All right, that's gonna do it for now. The game is looking amazing, but that's not all. The Battle for Earth is beginning soon online at GameTrailers.com. You wanna see that? The extended version of the demo is coming up. Kissy, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it, and best of luck with the game. Awesome, thank you.